Hey guys, welcome back to Reading When I Can. Um, my name is Katie and I'm doing a catch up because my change of channel name was probably the best thing that I could do this year. Um, and I am truly reading when I can. So 2020 has been quite a year for all of us. Um, and as usual, um, I have the best intentions when it comes to making videos and then things happen and get in the way and you know, it is what it is. Um, so it's been a couple months, I think June or maybe even May was the last time that I filmed. Um, but I have the best intentions to do the, um, mid-year freak out tag and all that stuff. Um, so I'm just going to do it now because it's the middle of September and what else is there to do? So, um, my goal this year as per Goodreads was to read 52 books. Um, I figured one book a week is pretty realistic for someone who w works full time and has a toddler. Um, and I've actually read 54 books so far this year and it's September. So we still have a couple months to go. Um, 11 of those that I have added were children's books like board books, um, etc. Um, cause I figured I am reading them to my son. Um, and that way I can keep track of what I'm reading. Um, so I don't know if I'm necessarily counting them. Um, so if that's the case, I'm at, uh, 43 books for this year, but, um, so far I've read 54 as per Goodreads, so not too bad. Um, I did want to talk about some of my favorite standout books this year, um, and some that have kind of let me down. So I'm actually going to start with some things that I've loved about this year. I've been doing a ton of buddy reads with Heidi and Doris, um, and we just have like such a great time. Um, we've become really, really good friends and we talk about our lives and day to day as well as reading. And it's just like a no pressure, awesome, uh, reading group. So that's been my like favorite thing. So shout out to my friends. Um, and I'm in another, uh, Voxer chat with a bunch of awesome romance ladies. So I'm not always as active in that. Um, but they're all incredible. So I just wanted to shout them out as well. Um, and some of the books that I've loved this year, now I normally have a stack, but I'm short on time right now, but I did want to talk about some of the books that I really loved. So again, 11 of the books that I've read this year um, are children's books, board books, but the adult books that I've loved this year, um, and I'm just going to go through them, but The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hugo was one of my favorite books. That's by Stuart Turton, I think is how you pronounce his name. And I really enjoyed the twists and the turns that came along with that book. Um, the Ravenels or Ravenel series by Lisa Kleypas has been such a delight. Um, I read those with Doris and Heidi and we kind of started, I think we started at the end of 2019, but then we finished the series in, in the spring and each book um, was just so good. There were some that I did like more than others. Um, some characters really grew on me while others... Um, I didn't love as much, but on the whole, I really recommend that series. It's a good introduction um, for people who are getting into Regency romance. Um, I know it's not for everybody, but um, the good thing about books like The Ravenels or The Bridgertons is you get to know a family, um, and throughout the series, you can see how they grow in character development, and it's not just limited to their own books. So... If you are in the market for a Regency romance series, I highly recommend The Ravenels. Um, I really loved Beach Read by Emily Henry. I had that for one of my Book of the Month picks, um, and I read it in about a day. It was just really good. Um, I didn't know what to expect because um, I had never read the author before, but definitely one of the standouts from this year. Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. So good. Um, I listened to that one on audio. Um, and that's definitely one of the reasons why my reading has been so plentiful this year. Um, I started reading audiobooks, which I had never really done before. Um, my commute to work, to and from work, it's about 10 to 15 minutes each way, 15 minutes if I get every single traffic light. Um, so it doesn't really allow a lot of time for reading, but I've started to listen to audiobooks as I like do laundry or do the dishes and it really makes a difference. Um, and you can kind of just breeze through these books and it's a really enjoyable experience most of the time. Um, I really enjoyed the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Um, not usually my type of book, um, but I thought it was really well done. There were some scenes that were definitely grotesque, but... Um, for something that's not usually my genre, I really enjoyed it. 
I loved The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. Um, it's a family drama over like four or five decades. Um, and a sibling relationship with their stepmother and this house that looms large in their family history and memories. Um, I really love The Last Mrs. Summers, which is the most recent, um, oh, well, I can't think of the series name, but she, oh, the Royal Spina series. So it's the most recent uh, Royal Spinus book by Reese Bowen, and I just thought this was so good. Um, the previous one is actually on my disappointing books of the year, but um, the most recent one, it was definitely the usual feel. Um, it's a little bit of a gothic mystery. Really, really loved it. Um, and my standout book this year, my favorite one, was The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. Um, I read this during Jane Austen July. It's about Mary Bennett, who's usually a forgotten sister. Um, it really made me think about the other characters in Pride and Prejudice. And you just look at them through a different lens. And I just thought it was wonderfully done. Um, the book was a library book, but I fully intend to buy it when it comes out in paperback because I just adored it. So um, if you're in the market for, you know, it, it's one of those Jane Austen fan fiction books, but I thought it could totally hold its own. Um, you do need to know the background of Pride and Prejudice, I would say, but it reads more like um, a historical fiction rather than a fan fiction. So I just really love that book. So I do highly recommend that. Now, when it comes to disappointing books this year, the Brother Sinister series by Courtney Milan has been hit or miss for me. Um, I think we've read four, no, the first three books and then two novellas. And for the most part, I've liked the novellas more than the actual novels. Um, Sometimes the plot just seems very meandering. Um, I feel like the characters, we don't get a fleshed out view. Um, so that one's been hit or miss for me. Um, I've heard such good things, but I don't know. I haven't jived well with all of them. That's not to say that they're bad. They just have been disappointing to me. Um, Daring in the Duke by Sarah McLean was probably the most disappointed I've been this year with a book. Um, as a general rule, I love Sarah McLean. I like the way she writes her stories, you definitely have to suspend belief as far as historical accuracy. But the way that the book reads, it's very repetitive. Um, a lot of the sentences seemed very choppy. Um, that really disrupted the reading experience for me. Um, and I, just the build up throughout the entire series, it's a trilogy and no spoilers, but the other two books kind of bring the conflict to this one and the resolution just wasn't there for me. So I was disappointed with that. I still love Sarah McLean. I'm still going to read all of her books, but that was definite a disappointment, uh, definitely a disappointment for me. Um, One to Watch by Kate Stamen London was okay. Um, that was another book of the month pick that there was a lot of hype around. Um, it just wasn't as good as everyone had said it was for me. Um, and there were a lot of typos in my book and I don't know if it's because it was a book of the month copy, but there were like a number of sentences that just read really weird and didn't make any sense. Um, and the final, I don't know if it's really disappointing, but the switch, um, was okay for me. Um, I read the flat share by Beth O'Leary and I loved it. So when the switch came out, I was like, Oh, this sounds so cute. It's basically the holiday, but with a grandma and her granddaughter, um, and I listened to the audio and I personally don't recommend the audio. Um, the stylization of the reading was totally weird. Um, it alternated narrators, but then sometimes within the narration, the voices got a little weird. There was like one random man who spoke out. So I don't know. I was disappointed with that. Um, that's a contemporary romance, but it just didn't live up to the hype for me either. Um, and the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I did want to mention I didn't hate it. I didn't love it um, by Suzanne Collins. It's the prequel to The Hunger Games. Um, I just thought for such a long book, it didn't give us everything that we might have wanted um, as a prequel to the series. So it also ends kind of abruptly. There's multiple parts. I listened to the audio for that one as well. Um, Santino Fontana was the narrator and I love him. I've seen him on Broadway. He was Greg in The Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Um, he is the voice of Prince Hans in Frozen. So his narration was great. 
um, just the, the storytelling. It was very long and it just didn't live up to the hype. So anyway, that's been my reading year so far. Um, I am planning on taking part in Victober. I read quite a bit during Jane Austen July, but I still haven't finished Emma. Um, I had some health issues. I ended up having surgery. Everything is okay, but um, that kind of knocked me for a loop in August. Um, so trying to get back on the reading train and I'm back to work now. So it's, it's been a little bit rocky as far as September has gone. Um, I'm currently reading You Had Me at Ola, um, which I was super hyped for and it's just reading okay for me for, for right now. So that's all that's going on here. Um, but I just wanted to touch base and I am so happy to see all of you guys. Let me know what you were reading below. If you liked any of the books that I discussed today or if you had any disappointing reads like I did this year. So anyhow, I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.